Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about uh, of MCQs on the topic organic farming. Okay. So before going to discuss about this MCQs, let me give some brief introduction on or organic farming. Is okay. The organic farming is again a type of an farming in which there is an absolute zero for usage of chemicals. Right. From sowing till uh, uh, from sowing till you are harvesting. Uh, we do not use any type of an chemicals for its cultivation. Okay, that is called an organic farming. Okay, the first question: How organic enrich the soil? Okay, organic farmers not uh, organic farmers or farming enrich the soil. Options are through fertilizers or through manures or compost or through pesticides or antibiotics. Okay, answer will be yes. Manures and compost. I already told we are use we are not at all using any type of chemical fertilizers, right? Therefore, pesticides ruled out and antibiotics again we cannot use at all, either in organic or inorganic we do not use. And the fertilizers maybe your chemical fertilizers also ruled out. The answers will be your manures or compost. Okay, organic farmer seeks to build the soil. Uh, and enhance its inherent fertility by using your crop rotation, animal and green manures, cover crops, etc. So for crop rotation and tillage practices, must provide an appropriate seed bed or pest control while minimizing erosion. Second, how weeds are controlled in organic farming cultivation? Options are like an wood chips mulch, pesticide, herbicides, and all of this. Okay, answers will be your wood chips mulch we can answer red right? wood doesn't again an organic in nature and which are unbiodegradable and it is not made up of any chemicals right therefore organic weed control is an approach to weed control and and prevention that does not involve any use of synthetic chemicals and or in weed killers some organic weed control strategies are your cultural mechanical methods focusing on prevention crop rotation and cultivation also third question how many years the land or soil must be treated as an organic without using any prohibited chemicals and any other substance to be qualified for your organic certification okay just go through this organic farming and what are the steps involved and how the product or land is to be certified as an organic and what are the steps or how the farmers are applied to uh, for a certification and how many years it will take what are the steps needed this are all it comes under the organic certification then how many years it will take either one year three years a two years or four years okay answer will be years uh, it will be take a minimum of in two years minimum of a two years before it achieves a full organic status okay we can or symbolically uh, represent a citizen organic in nature the crop sown or transplanted into fully organic land may be sold as an organic in nature. Next, in which year an organic farming movement started? Is it a 2000, a 1960, 1980, or 1930? Okay, our answer will be years. This is the D, that is 1930. Okay, it is not 1930, it will be begin in 1940. Sorry, it is the options are there is no options, therefore, answers will be your it is not 1930, it is 1940. Okay, the organic movement began in the 1940 as a reaction to agriculture growing reliance on synthetic fertilizers and pesticides. To oppose it to that, this organic movement started in the year 1940. Sorry for the option given, wrong option given here. Okay. What is the importance and benefits of organic farming? There is no chemicals used. It is environmentally friendly. Increase the soil health. All of these. Okay. Answer will be absolutely all of these because we are not at all using any chemicals. Therefore, it will be increases the soil health. Interlinked options and environmentally friendly. Okay. Answer will be your all of this before jumping directly. Okay. Yes, it is no chemicals used. Just stick. No. Just read all the options carefully. Then only go go for an answering that question. Okay. Compared with the conventional agriculture, organic farming uses fewer pesticides. It reduces the soil erosion. It decreases the nitrate leaching into groundwater and surface water. 
and recycles animal waste back into farm these benefits are counterbalanced by the higher food cost for consumers and generally lowers the yield which country has more organic farming practices is it in australia or in india united states or uk answer is the australia australia has a largest organic agriculture area around 35.7 million hectares followed by argentina and china next question the best practice to maintain soil health in organic farming is is through crop rotation synthetic fertilizers using black soil or monoculture answer is the crop rotation because i already explained in this question that how it uh, no so no this question like and we should go for crop rotation or prevention through your uh, organic manures or through your putting and uh, wood chip uh, Uh, what called mulch etc right that so therefore to maintain the soil health to avoid the infestation of the weeds or some it acting as an a vector or a source for your pest and diseases it through your corporation we obviously we can break down the life cycle of any diseases right like that okay the best practice to maintain soil health is in organic farming is crop rotation next question which of these is not allowed in organic cultivation options are sewage sludge crop rotation cover crops or buffer zones okay answer is a sewage sludge we already know that sewage sludge is the uh, the by product or an end product of the um, municipal waste right because in our daily uh, life activities we are going to produce lots of solid waste this is all your sludge so sludge is a solid thing right sewage sludge is not at all involved in the or a load in the organic cultivation but cover crops okay good buffer zones okay maintaining the zones to uh, avoid uh, mixtures or to avoid and contaminations and crop rotation obviously it is very very good therefore answer will be the sewage sludge okay the methods like your irradiation sewage sludge genetic engineering this are all expressly prohibited Uh, being used when growing or processing organic foods which is the main source of water for organic cultivation in india options are rivers oceans at tanks and wells and borers options will be your wells and bore wells okay wells and bore wells are the main source of the water for organic cultivation just but when come to your um, it this is a, which is a major source type of an irrigation system used in india either it is in tank irrigation or in well irrigation canal irrigation or drip irrigation like that answers will be yours well irrigations only for the organic cultivation also be the wells and bore wells okay wells and bore wells are the main source of water for the organic cultivation in india next question vermi composting is prepared by through animals or worm a bacteria or fungus okay by come to okay for the worm or vascular or vascular mycorrhiza obviously it's a fungus right for vermi composting we are using the worms obviously not uh, it is a sound it sounds to be not worms like but we know that vermi culture is produced through, through worms only and there are the most worm farm raise two main types of earthworm one is elsian phochida next is a lumbricus rubellus okay these worms are commonly used to produce vermi compost the process is called as vermi composting or vermi culture what is a vermi culture the process of production of the compost is called your vermi culture the crop yield in organic farming when compared to conventional farming is either is a less than convention either more than conventional both are equal and none of this okay answer is the less than conventional farming okay uh, we can by in uh, in hari bari don't tick yes it is an organic culture like you are not really losing any chemical yield will be no no yield is very less when compared to conventional farm why why so because in conventional farming it is allowed to use your any pesticides any chemicals more amount of fertilizers etc obviously yield is more in organic culture we are using or controlling diseases and pests only through organic means but the usage of your neem seed kernel extract 
for the sowing we are not at all using after sowing we are not at all using any fertilizers like your urea npk etc we are just using a manures and compost we are using very very organic uh, type okay then how can we expect a good yield compared to conventional farming logic right on an average the organic yields are 80% of those obtained under the conventional agriculture and standard deviation was 20% is more or less but obviously it will be less next question azolla bio fertilizer is mainly used in this crop this following crop like a jar a rice or paddy a maize or millets right answer will be your or paddy because we already is a famous uh, bio fertilizers in paddy uh, anabella azole because uh, the azole it is the a type of bio fertilizers which are uh, used in paddy cultivation uh at an, to increase the nitrogen fixation because rice is a cereal right it do not have any capacity to fix the biological nitrogen therefore azola will be act as a bio fertilizer to fix nitrogen to the rice that will be available to the growth therefore azola increases the rice productivity okay the remaining 95% remaining in azola's biomass until the plant dies as a plant decomposes its organic nitrogen is rapidly mineralized and released as an ammonia which then becomes available as a bio fertilizer for the growth of the rice plants which of the following is a nitrification inhibitor i already explained in my theory class that what is nitrogen is and what is nitrification is what is ammonification how the nitrogen present in the atmosphere get it fixed into a soil through your bnf right then how that fixed nitrogen in the form of our ammonia converted to nitrate then how it converted to nitrate either how it lost to through a, uh, to an atmosphere through denitrification right so i already explains the nitrogen cycle therefore to avoid that nitrification we we have to inhibit right to avoid it because nitrogen is such a type of a nutrient which are very much susceptible for leaching losses or denitrification losses therefore to avoid that we either we are using neem seed cotton cotton seed cake or groundnut cake and mustard cake okay answer will be a neem cake right apart from that other synthetic nitrification inhibitor because not because that question this question i am explaining in organic uh, farming chapter it's okay go for your nitrogen instead of that if they given a synthetic nitrification inhibitors also as an example or also as an option we should we should, we should know them also right which may be like a nitrofurin diclimadines or 3,4 dimethyl pyrazole phosphate organic inhibitors like your groundnut cake neem cake etc right next key next one is i think it will be a uh, next the national center of organic farming in india is located in okay option r gaziabad hyderabad kochi a pune answer is a gaziabad a national center for organic and natural farming is a nodal organization for promotion of organic farming located in gaziabad the soil ph can be increases increased by adding is it lime a sand a nitrogen or potash okay answer is the lime because we already know that uh, in problematic soils right uh, in uh, just i briefly i explain about uh, will explain about problematic soil because of acid type of soils and basic type of soils right the basic type of soils may be include your alkaline type of soils saline type of soils black soils or maybe the uh, white alkali soils so many acid type of soils in which the ph is very very low in this the basic type of soils where the ph is very very high to correct the acidic type of the soils we will put lime to correct the basic type of the soil we will put gypsum therefore gypsum try to do a decrease the ph where the lime try to increase the ph to correct its problematic type of soils therefore soil ph can be increased they are asking right can be increased by you putting your lime on tea
Lime is usually added to an acid soils to increase the soil pH. The addition of the lime not only replaces the hydrogen ions and releases the soil pH, thereby eliminating most major problems associated with acid soils, but is also provide two nutrients like your calcium and magnesium to the soil. Which country represents the lowest percentage of an area under organic farming out of a cultivated area? Is it India, China, Australia or America? Okay. Answer will be yes, India. Lowest, they were asking lowest. This is an opportunity for India to represent globally through organic culture, right? Organic farming. Therefore, the lowest percentage in area where organic farming is practiced is the answer is the India. Okay, that is what I explained here. What is the major component of organic farming or cultivation system? Either the pesticides, synthetic fertilizers, chemical fertilizers, and biofertilizers. Answer will be obviously biofertilizers, which are organic in nature. It along with that crop rotation, cover crops, animal manures, composting, mineral grade rock additives, vermicompost, etc. Growing green manure crops in the field, incorporating in its green stage in the same field is known as. Is it ex situ manuring, green leaf manuring, in situ green manuring or not? none of this. Okay. All these type of the green manure crops, green manure types, I explained everything in the fertilizer chapter. Okay. Answer what will be answer yours? Answer will be a green leaf manuring. Okay. Because we will incorporate the green manure crops in the green stage in the same field. When we, we will catch up right then we will add therefore green leaf manuring can be defined as an pruning and collecting of green leaves and twigs from the various trees herbs shrubs and then apply them to a fertilize uh, to a soils as a fertilizer is called as green leaf manuring ex situ is a thing but uh, we will grow the crop and then in situ is more or less equal in situ green manuring that means a green leaf manure sorry green manure crops are grown in the land itself after the harvest of the main crop they will be puddled or they will be rotated into that incorporate into the same land itself is called in situ green manuring next question the breeding and rearing of an earthworms is controlled in a controlled environment is called as is it vermi wash, vermi culture, vermi composting or vermi casting? The breeding and rearing of earthworms is called as vermi culture. Okay, don't confuse. We are not uh, tell, asking uh, the preparation of vermi compost. Okay, they will be asking the vermi culture. That is vermi form. So vermi earthworms itself. Therefore, answer will be vermi culture. It is an obviously artificial rearing of an Earthworms, right? Next question. The main organic product export market for India is China, America, Canada, Europe. That is our export market. That means destination, right? Destination from India. It will be answer is the Europe. Europe is a main organic product export market or destination from India, right? Next, the main concept of organic farming practice is give back to the country, give back to nature, give back to soil and none of this. Okay, answer will be the give back to nature because nature includes soil also, country also. Okay, try to give the longer or a broader answer. The main concept of organic practice is give back to nature. Next, the key principles of organic farming are is it mixed farming, crop rotation, organic cycle or all of this? Okay. Answer is the all of this. I already explained this earlier, right? And also there will be no using of genetic engineering or some prohibited activities I already told in the last, last question. Practice of crop rotation, often replacing soil nutrients or usage of green manure crops, mulch, mixed farming technique. Therefore, these are all a load. 
the best way to identify the difference between organic and non organic foods is look for the organic label by price by squeeze test and none of this okay answer is go for organic label because after the certification of in any product the product will get some organic label right through a green label or something else i don't know exactly what the color of the label is but they give it for our example like in fasai fasai will give some organic o plus label for the organic foods like that every organizations uh, of its own product it will get an organic label right next which state adopted organic farming very well or which farm state will adopt non organic farming for the first time answer will be gujarat sikkim uttarakhand kerala answer is a sikkim we already know that because sikkim is the first state which is 100% organic farming in india is a sikkim uh like that just look, look for the second state also some i think in current affair uh, sikkim apart from sikkim's other state also gotten gotten organic farming status and some parts of your andaman and nicobar also they got an organic farming status please look for this okay which one is a green manure biofertilizer maize a paddy ssb nia or none of this okay answer will be obviously saspenia okay the plant that are grown for green manure crops are known as green manure crops the most important green manure crops are sun hemp dianka pili pespera cluster beans saspenia rostrata etc the usually the green manuring increases the crop yield is it 10 to 15% 30 to 50% 20 to 25 percent, 70 to 80 percent. Answer is a 30 to 50 percent. Okay, there will be an increase in, for example, about 30 to 50 percent the crop yield through green manures. Azolla as a fertilizer, obviously it is in rice increases the crop yield by 70 percent, 50 percent, 60 percent, and 40 percent. But why I put uh, I will I put I am putting this type of questions because one or two max not more than two to three questions will definitely come as a numericals. Okay, we will just definitely we will uh, we will not try to re remember these uh, number uh, type of an uh, options or facts right. But try to remember the facts as much as possible for the. to given a correct very very simple answers also right therefore azolla fertilizers bio fertilizers increase the crop yield by 60% option will be your c next question which one of the farming practice is eco friendly is what is it eco friendly eco friend uh, there are there are so many words like eco friendly crop environmentally benefit type of crop organic type of crop like that okay eco friendly is nothing but which will do not harm any uh, a bad a negative aspect to an environment is nothing but your eco friendly like is in hydroponics organic farming conventional farming none of this okay answer is the answer is will be yours organic farming right because in hydroponic some chemicals we will use for the pest and disease control and conventional farming obviously we will use therefore organic farming is very very eco friendly in nature that is why that is why it is getting so much of importance nowadays the cultivation cost of organic food is more than conventional less than conventional it is equal and none of this answer is the obviously more than i already told yield will be very less more labor required more than cost required for the organic farming when compared to your conventional crop or the conventional farming okay food pay cost around 20 to 100% more than the conventional farming also because i already told because we cannot control disease and pest by spraying chemicals we we have to control through an organic means obviously it will be very costly the soil fertility is reduced due to through a poor drainage or imbalanced use of fertilizers or over watering or none of this okay answer is the imbalanced use of fertilizers poor drainage i okay it will obviously reduce the fertility no doubt about it but at not at the greater extent 
when compared to in, uh, imbalanced use of fertilizer why there will be imbalanced use of fertilizer because unscientific method of cultivation by the farmers or over usage or less usage maybe both leads to fertilizers uh, leads to soil fertility loss right therefore soil fertility decline occur when the quantity of nutrients removed from the soil in the harvested products exceed the quantities of the nutrients being applied is there any subsidy provided for organic farming in india okay obviously it will be uh, it will be it depends right because it always we will not given any subsidy for the organic farming in india but it will be depending upon the uh, type of an uh, uh, it will be depending depends the okay? subsidy it depends upon the uh, a area through the uh, either it will be your ngo or market or is it a farmers etc next the three primary nutrients needed for plant growth are is it nitrogen phosphorus potassium npk calcium zinc copper magnesium calcium sulfur magnesium zinc boron copper okay answer is the obviously a nitrogen phosphorus and in potassium these are called as a major nutrients needed for the uh, needed for the plant to grow right which cropping method involves the growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same land mixed cropping ultra cropping into cropping or intensive cropping answer is the mixed cropping because we will not um, what is a mixed cropping mixed cropping is a cropping system in which we are growing many type of the crops in same piece of the land without maintaining a proper rows for example three rows of maize we can grow and eight rows of uh, some wheat crop or some uh, uh, some pa and of uh, or uh, some part of your rice or like that okay we can grow Uh, that that is called mixed cropping mm. next what does gmo stands for the farming in or the food sector what does gmo stand for it is the good morning officer option will be like growth maturity organisms genetically modified organisms a general medicine order answer is genetically modified organisms we already know that right gmo is genetically modified what is genetically modified organisms the concept of genetic engineering or genetically modified uh, organisms is that we will alter the genetic makeup of the plant or an organisms to get an a desired genes or desired resistance or something yield some desired genes that can be grown in the next generation so that it will be very much benefit to our objective of breeding is called as your genetically modified organisms right therefore through maybe through mutation or transfer or to remove a specific dna in the organism which of the following is a synthetic mineral nutrient is it a compost vermi compost farmed manure or fertilizer answer is the farmed manure right it is synthetic material obviously next what is intercropping the maximum utilization of a nutrient supplied continuous irrigation there is no set pattern of, of rows and crops harvesting two crops at a time answer is a there is no set of rows of the crops what is intercropping intercropping is nothing but a growing of an a intercrop in between the two main crops is called intercropping right intercropping is a practice of growing two or more crops in proximity the most common goal of intercropping is to produce a greater yield on given piece of land by making use of resources that would otherwise not to be utilized by single crop is called as the intercropping which of the following processes reduces soil fertility intensive growing crops growing agriculture maybe reduces fertility also crop rotation obviously no intercropping no cover crops no therefore intensive growing crops are uh, agriculture which is uh, unscientific way right obviously it will reduce the soil fertility other things like your erosion compaction nutrient imbalance pollution 
acidification, water logging, loss of soil biodiversity, increasing salinity have been affecting soil across the globe, reducing its ability to support the plant life and so grow the crops. It's called as the these are all the uh, things which reduces the soil fertility. What plants or crops contain the nitrogen fixing bacteria? The cotton, a paddy, a maize, or gram crops. Obviously, gram crop. What is a gram? Chickpea, right? Chickpea is a gram. We commonly call it as a gram for chickpea. Obviously, it is a pulse having the capacity to fix the nitrogen, right? Having the bacteria which are in what the crop will not fix the uh, nitrogen but the any bacteria example is your rhiz rhizobium get in line with your uh, pulses roots where they can uh, fix the nitrogen right therefore the example of nitrogen fixing bacteria include rhizobium which is associated with the plants in the pea family various azospirillum species with respect to cereal grasses they fix the nitrogen which of the following is made by using chemicals? Either the pesticides, biofertilizers, organic menus, organic compost. Answer is the pesticides. Obviously, it will be made up of chemicals to control pests. Who is the father of green revolution? It is very simple. Gandhi, Nehru, M.S. Swaminathan, Patel. M.S. Swaminathan in the year 1960 is a plant genesist and a plant breeder and uh, who bring uh, lots of innovations like uh, he was a one person who contributed more to green revolution by by introducing a rice and wheat varieties thereby we achieved uh, so much of an high yield uh, in that varieties crop production and uh, we achieved a lot sufficiency india achieved self-sufficiency in this uh, cereal green production through the green revolution right Thank you.